we got our jobs report and it was absolutely a blockbuster guys. oh my god yeah. a blockbuster um so the expected annual jo- uh, monthly jobs gained in January was supposed to be around 180,000 188,000 somewhere around there it ended up being 353,000 not only was it double the expectation the months of November and December also got revised upward by more than 100,000 jobs that means that all told employers added 3.1 million jobs last year alone and that is 2.7 million that was initially reported so with all of the adjustments we've got up to 3.1 million in the last year this puts our unemployment rate at 3.7 percent the longest running uh unemployment rate below four percent like 50 years or something and i just want to emphasize as far as like what economists thought about this they across the board thought this was blockbuster economists that were polled by like several different uh, news sources reuters new york times none of them estimated jobs growth this high the top end of the, their estimates were around 300,000 we're looking at 353,000 that's crazy crazy it's absurd and not only were the jobs added you know not only did we see record jobs added we also see wages continue to grow over the year wages have grown 4.5% in uh, uh, the annually over January. If we look back in December with the consumer price index, it was 3.4%. So now we see 1.1% wage premiums Mm -hmm. over last year. And this is before we even see the CPI data for the month of January. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now, maybe a couple months now, and you're going to see this in a couple, in next time we talk probably. The January month is pivotal. Last year, January was our worst month for inflation. Once we get past that and that last month of January dips out of the average and we get our new January number, this could be 3.1. This could be 3.0, you know, so and we could be seeing 2 percent. I'm sorry, 1.5 percent wage growth. And so it's really good news for the American worker, too. I mean, like this isn't this isn't just an economy that's being felt by the rich um, from Mm -hmm. my perspective. Like we actually see wage growth yeah which no, is really cool no and data is showing the wage growth is actually accruing higher at the bottom of the income distribution yes which wage is exactly growth. what we want to see not for just for those lowest earners who are who need the wage growth the most who we at least advocate for getting that wage growth mm-hmm. the most most but also for the sake of the overall economy which always benefits the most from having more income at the bottom of the distribution absolutely because the people at the bottom of the distribution are the ones who spend it the most yes and consumption is the biggest driver of our economy when we look back on 2023 and the economic growth that we saw with the 3.1 percent number i think was Mm -hmm. the final number there it was driven because of americans ability to consume yes because of our ability to buy with the disposable income that we have Mm -hmm. in this country that other countries just don't have right now. And we're unique in that position and we're lucky for that. Yeah. You know, Um, but then I want to go a little into where these jobs were, where these jobs were being made. Right. So 23,000 manufacturing jobs were added over the course of the year. Okay, we have 23,000 manufacturing jobs, Um, construction jobs. We saw 11,000. But Mm -hmm. if we drill down really specifically, we see that non-residential specialty trade contractors were 13.7 thousand jobs were created. That non-residential specialty trade contractors, that is where we're building the fabs. That's where we're building the semiconductor plants and the new um manufacturing facilities coming out of the chips act and the inflation reduction act and on the other hand we see a i'm is this right that i'm seeing a loss of 7.7 thousand jobs in heavy and civil engineering construction which i'm pretty sure is where uh construction for oil drilling and natural gas extraction happens um yeah so that might have a positive effect on our climate goals as well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so there's a lot of cool stuff in here one thing that i don't really like is like our our, our residential building construction added 2.5 thousand jobs i look back to the last couple years like pre-covid mm. and it was kind of sitting more at like the three four five numbers the 2.5 is actually kind of relatively low for that which okay. kind of sucks but the what's going on right now in america is a manufacturing boom really more than anything mm. our construction is heavy around manufacturing our manufacturing investment is the largest it's been since like 1970 
So that's that's where we're in right now. Yeah. And then the largest job growth, what what and the largest job growth we see is in professional and business services, specifically like IT and technical services, mm-hmm. scientific stuff, professional consulting, 41.9 thousand jobs added in that sector. And then when we look at our private education and health services, that's the largest, 112,000 jobs added in private education and health service. Yes. Wow. So, you know, as America ages, we need more people to take care of them. Definitely, definitely. And generally, blockbuster economy. Blockbuster. As we keep on saying, American economy is super strong. Bidenomics. Bidenomics. Killing it. Killing it.